Hello, friends, and welcome to KGW News at 5 o'clock. And we begin with a third straight day of a historic, record-breaking heat wave. Just like on Saturday and Sunday, today, Portland once again set a new all-time high temperature. Hard to believe after the past couple days we've had. There is some good news, though. It's almost over, in a way. Buckle in. There is a bit of a cool down in sight. We want to get to Chief Meteorologist Matt Zafino with our first forecast. Yeah, it's a major cool down. It's already underway in much of the Willamette Valley. It'll reach Portland, the northern Willamette Valley, last. But big, big changes happening down in Corvallis and Eugene. And that cooler air is headed this way. We're at 114 right now. That's a down a degree from last hour. We've hit 115 today. Actually, maybe even 116. The final numbers will be coming in. East winds, though, still at the airport, ensuring that we stay hot. There's the 115 Portland, 116 over in Troutdale, 114 in McMinnville. It's already a lot cooler there, but look at this. Eugene topped out at 93. They're on their way to a hot day. Then the wind switch came out of the southwest. Southwest, that cooler air coming in from the coast. And that was it for the warming there. So our historic and unprecedented heat wave continues. I saw 117 in Salem today. Now, consider this. That's only two degrees shy of the all time temperature record for the whole state of Oregon, which was set in Prineville and in Pendleton way back in 1898. OK, so it is amazing. We got that close to Oregon's all time record high temperature. It's the new hottest of all time for Western Oregon and a June record for all of Oregon. So that's how historic and unprecedented this heat wave is. Look at the winds they are all out of the east in the metro area. But now McMinnville, they turn to the southwest, which is why they dropped 13 degrees in one hour. Still hot there, but it's dropped. It's dropped from 114 to 101 in one hour. That's a good drop. Corvallis winds out of the west about 30 miles an hour. Same thing in Eugene, about 26 miles an hour, which is why they are so much cooler as they're pulling that cool marine layer ocean air into the Willamette Valley. And that trend will continue. Look at the lows this morning, too. Aurora never dropped out of the 80s. Portland, 76. If that holds, if we don't drop below 76 by midnight, that'll be a new warmest overnight temperature for Portland. I think we actually have a chance of getting cooler than that by midnight. And then down the valley is a bit cooler, but still these warm nights have been brutal and that's about to change. Look at the coast socked in at Astoria, nice and cool at 64 and that's where our cooler air is coming from and the relief. So those cooler winds are spreading down the Willamette Valley from south to north right now. Valley highs will remain below 95 for the next week. Now I know that may sound hot, but consider that's 20 degrees cooler than we were today. That's a big difference, and that means our temperatures through much of the day will be in the 80s. So way more tolerable There's even some showers possible around the middle of next week. So we'll talk more about the historic nature of these temperatures, more on the records that were broken and and the relief that is happening now, guys. Back to you. Boy, that is good news. That, that couldn't hear better news than that. That it's going to cool off. When you think of 95 being 20 degrees less right? than what we're dealing with now, it's, it's unbelievable. Matt, thank you. A lot of people need need a place to go and cool off. When you're thinking about these unbelievable temperatures, and there are plenty of cooling centers you should know about open right now in Oregon and Southwest Washington. If you text the word heat to 503-226-5088, we will send you a link, and it'll give you a full list of all the places you need to go and a list of the local heat related delays and cancellations we've seen. This oppressive heat is is dangerous, of course, for a lot of people, and it's also testing our power grid. Now, so far, things are working out pretty well, although about 800 customers in Multnomah and Washington counties were without power just 90 minutes ago. But there are ways for you to keep cool. KGW's Pat Doris reports. At the Oregon Convention Center, the air conditioning is on, and a couple hundred people, including Dennis Henry, have gathered to escape the sweltering heat. I'm 71. Uh, I have hay fib, uh, which many people know uh, is a heart condition that makes it harder to breathe. And uh, it does not go well with 116 degrees, or whatever it is today. The convention center is free for anyone who needs a place to cool off. You can stay overnight and they'll feed you as well. Call 211 if you need a ride there. It's open until Wednesday morning. The county's public health officer, Dr. Jennifer Vines, says this heat is a real threat to many. We know that calls to emergency medical services are at levels that we've never seen before in our region. She's worried some will not survive. So fingers crossed that as we look back at this period, um, we don't find excessive deaths, but um, this is extreme heat for our region and a true emergency. The heat is also stressing our power grid as hundreds of thousands of homes and businesses crank up air conditioners. Everybody in the world, including me, has their air conditioner and fans turned on. How's the power holding out? 
You know, so far, so good. Um, we had planned for this record high temperatures, and they have not, uh, not failed to deliver. She said the utility could see an all-time high for electrical use, but it's too soon to tell. In the meantime, there are issues that become huge problems for those affected in this heat. Midday Monday, more than 200 customers were without power in Clackamas County. Nearly 600 were out in Washington County. We know that these extended periods of high heat put some strain on the electrical equipment within our system, and sometimes that can cause it to break down. At Portland's airport, something happened in the major power lines flowing from Pacific Power to the airport, a brief interruption both Saturday and Sunday evenings that had widespread impact. We don't know the cause of them, but what we do know happened is that when, when we get a power bump, which happens occasionally, it trips a bunch of breakers, and there's a lot of equipment that has to be restarted manually. So think of all the moving walkways and the escalators. Our maintenance crews have to go out and restart those. The airport has its own backup power for runways and lights. Pacific Power says its records show no interruption in power supplied to the airport. Back at the convention center, Dennis Henry says if you are watching this story and sweating because your home is too hot, do yourself a favor. Come visit. It's free and easy. You don't have to know anything. You just walk in the door and they line you up with a bed and uh, see if you need anything. Here's some water. Are you hungry? Pat Doris, KGW News. A lot, of, a lot of people need that sort of help right now. Portland Public Schools, they're not, they're not risking it with this heat, people's safety and their health. They're canceling all their programs. The district made this decision because several of its buildings don't have any air conditioning. This is a big deal, though, for a lot of people. So it means the grab-and-go meal service was canceled, child care, their summer enrichment programs all canceled. Even if your student program is in a non-Portland public school building, it's still safe to assume that those programs are also shut down, unless you hear otherwise. The district is pausing programs in all PPS buildings again tomorrow because of the heat. If you were hoping to cool off in the mountains this week, Think again. Joe Ranieri has more on how the hot temperature surprised some campers near Mount Hood. We saw a lot of people throughout the Mount Hood National Forest who decided to come up here to beat the heat down in the valley. Although temperatures up here throughout the Oregon Cascades were on the warm side, to say the least. In fact, one group of campers saw firsthand how quickly their camping plans can change when the temperatures start to warm up. By Monday afternoon, many of the campsites at the Tollgate Campground near Mount Hood cleared out, except for a few. Yeah, I think just not five, five, five miles from here, it's like 105 right now, it's crazy. John Baresi and his family decided to come up here to cool off. Well, this is one of our favorite spots, first of all, but indeed the heat is just, just encourages us to get into the woods and breathe some fresh air and, and cool off a bit, um, especially with the, the water just running off Mount Hood right now. It's just amazing to dip into. Our blistering hot weather melted snow so quickly off the mountain, it washed out a road to the Lawrence Lake campground, forcing groups to evacuate because the campsite washed out. A culvert upstream uh, was blocked by boulders or other kind of glacial debris. And then the river, looking for a way, a way down, just kind of created its own course across the road. Heather Ibsen with the Mount Hood National Forest says this area is known for seeing this road washing out. It happened earlier this winter too. As temperatures are higher, the, when that, it's when that snow melt happens more quickly that sometimes these kind of flooding or our drying out conditions can worsen. Nobody was hurt and everyone was able to get out safely, but it's going to take crews a couple weeks before they can open the campsite again. In the meantime, campsites that are still open, just get out into some woods, breathe some fresh air, it's good for the soul, are going to be seeing an influx of crowds, especially as we get closer to the holiday weekend. Joe Ranieri, KGW News. Thanks to Joe. Fireworks, they went on sale today in Clark County on the hottest day ever recorded there. And that has some fire officials concerned, frankly. Tim Gordon checked in at a fireworks stand to talk to people there, while Clark County Fire Chief is trying to ask for a ban. There is no escaping the irony that on a day of record-setting heat and dangerous fire conditions, fireworks stands are stocked up and selling. Although fireworks are not allowed in Vancouver, they are in most of the rest of the county for the 4th of July. Fire Chief John Knorr of Clark Cowlitz Fire and Rescue wishes they weren't. He represents all Clark County Fire Chiefs in strongly discouraging the use of fireworks by anyone this 4th of July. We want people to enjoy their family, enjoy their friends. We want people to do it safely. 
I want to see fireworks banned this year. It's just too dangerous out there. Some people are going to have the opportunity to use fireworks. If they do, they must take the utmost in caution and do it safely. Nor's district includes Northwest Clark County, but also a couple of cities that have banned fireworks. Both Ridgefield and La Center have said no to fireworks because of the extreme weather conditions. Back at the TNT Fireworks Warehouse, General Manager Bo Leach knows fire conditions are awful right now. But you're breaking the law if you'd like today and you should get in trouble. And so that's what I, my stance is. I'll sell it today, but that doesn't mean you need to light it today. We want you to wait until the 4th of July and then I think we can all enjoy it safely. This year, just blow it out of the water. It is hard to stop the excitement for some, even in the heat. But Renee Vetter says they'll be careful on the 4th. If it's going to be windy and super hot, we certainly wouldn't shoot them off. We really practice it ourselves. I don't like being told I can't have them because it's American tradition. It's, it's summertime, it's America. This summer is extraordinary so far. And in fireworks friendly Clark County, Chief Knorr says he's had plenty of support for stopping the fireworks altogether. Something the fire marshal and county leaders could do countywide if they wanted to. It's running three to one. I've had a few people who feel like I'm taking away their fun. I understand that, but these are unprecedented weather times. As long as the rules don't change, this fireworks warehouse and the other stands will be open all week. But it's important to remind you again, if you're going to light any fireworks, it's only legal on the 4th of July. In Clark County, Tim Gordon, KGW News. We should also let you know that the cities of Camas and Washougal, they've also banned fireworks this 4th of July. And Tim mentioned the potential for a countywide ban. He reached out to both the fire marshal and the county chair on that one. He has not heard back, not yet.